Ukrainian armed forces destroy targets in Russia's Belgorod region with German artillery. The Ukrainian armed forces are destroying targets in the Belgorod region of the German Federation with German self-propelled artillery units Panzer Hobbits 2000. This was reported from the front line in the Kharkiv region by Build reporter Bjorn Stridzel, who spent several days at the positions of the Ukrainian artillerymen. The reporter noted that the range of the Panzer Hobbits 2000 self-propelled artillery unit is up to 30 kilometers and the crew consists of five people. They are based in camouflaged wooded areas under trees. As soon as the order is given for a new strike, the self-propelled artillery unit leaves for the site, fires several DM-121 high-explosive fragmentation shells and then leaves the firing point so that it is not destroyed by return fire. The journalist noted that Ukrainian reconnaissance drones record that the PZH-2000 strikes are extremely effective. They accurately destroy Russian artillery and advancing units of the occupiers in the Belgorod region. According to the publication, since 2022, the Ukrainian armed forces have been using some Western weapons systems to strike targets in the Russian Federation, but they only began to do so en masse at the end of May, when the West allowed this due to the occupiers' offensive in the Kharkiv region. A Ukrainian artillery man told the reporter that Russian artillery doesn't bother me much and that kamikaze drones such as the Lancet are much more dangerous. The soldier also shared that it is very hot inside the PZH-2000 since there is no air conditioning. This not only exhausts people but also leads to the shutdown of some systems. According to BUILD, the latest PZH-2000 models have air conditioning. Army artillery affords an important contribution in combat actions, whatever the intensity and scenario. It gives combat forces fire support by engaging point and area targets as well as adversarial forces over long distances. The artillery also has diverse possibilities to reconnoiter adversarial forces and is able to engage them at long range at any time of the day or night in any weather conditions. Russia's war against Ukraine caused revolution in world's arms market. Currently, the largest European arms exhibition, Eurosatory, is being held in Paris, whereas the analyst of the German publication Bild, Julian Robka, notes it is very clear how the criminal war unleashed by Russia against Ukraine revolutionized the world arms market. Robka notes that more than 2,000 weapon samples are being demonstrated at the exhibition in Paris by arms manufacturers from 62 countries. At the same time, about 250 delegations from 96 countries, which are considered potential buyers, visited the exhibition. The analyst concluded that the criminal war unleashed by Russia against Ukraine has revolutionized the world arms market in three directions. The war on drones has intensified the need for high-tech and rapid-fire air defense systems. Heavy missile systems are also being revived. At the same time, tanks and armored vehicles protected from drones are needed again. Civilian companies began to produce weapons. For example, shipbuilders have started making marine drones, logistics firms have begun developing munitions supply chains, and IT developers have started introducing artificial intelligence into drones. Companies from third world countries have entered the market and supplied cheap weapons. The analyst concluded that quantity is more important than quality in a war like the one in Ukraine. According to analyst Julian Robka, a new Ukrainian-made kamikaze drone, Bulava, was presented at the most significant European arms exhibition, Eurosatory. The Ukrainian defense portal Defense Express calls it an analogue of the Russian Lancet and notes that it is presented abroad under the export name MACE, the analyst notes. The speed of a Bulava is up to 100 km an hour. This kamikaze drone can stay in the air for over 50 minutes. Bulava Ukrainian kamikaze drones operate with artificial intelligence software. This allows the drone to automatically find previously established weak spots in Russian tanks and armored personnel carriers during the final approach to the target. The current productivity is 300 pieces per month and continues to grow, Robka emphasized. Russia will receive unlimited supply of shells, missiles, which North Korea accumulated in 70 years. In America, they continue to comment on the security agreements between Russia and the North Korea. Let us recall that the signed agreement on strategic partnership contains the fourth chapter, which provides for mutual military assistance in the event of aggression against one of the countries by a third party. 
At the same time, as Kim Jong-un emphasized, Russia is already facing aggression from the entire NATO bloc. American Congressman Michael Waltz, who represents Florida in the House of Representatives, commenting on the agreement, said that this is bad news both for Ukraine and the USA. North Korea has been accumulating weapons of destruction, shells, missiles for over 70 years. Russia will receive an unlimited supply of all this, including ballistic missiles. And North Korea has its own interest in this because it will receive advanced Russian nuclear missile technologies in the space program and she can use all this against the whole world, he added. Further, Walz called the agreement between Russia and the North Korea an alliance of evil. Apparently, this is a new derivative of the hackneyed term axes of evil in the West. Continuing his reasoning, the American Republican lawmaker traditionally moved on to criticize Biden. According to him, the Biden administration has not taken any steps to prevent the alliance of evil from taking place. The Biden administration just shrugs. The only thing they can answer in this case is to sign new open checks for Ukraine. If you oppose this position, you will immediately be labeled as Putin's agents. This is the most superficial strategic thinking, Walls said. Since the clause on providing military and other assistance in the treaty signed by Kim and Putin can be interpreted as automatic military intervention, North Korea and Russia appear to have restored their alliance 28 years after their original defense agreement was abrogated. It can be evaluated as a declaration to the world that the relationship between North Korea and Russia has been elevated to a level approaching a military alliance, said Hyun Seung-soo, a senior researcher at the Korea Institute for National Unification.